So hi, I'm Stephanie Crabtree. For those who I haven't met, I think I know about a dozen people here. So if I don't know you, I'd like to know you. So um, I'd love to get into some conversations. Your points are great. And I think that this is the kind of debates that we need to have to really advance archaeological theory, advance our understanding of borrowing tools from other disciplines, and really have a rigorous approach to understanding the past. So Isa gave me the topic of what is complexity science and why should we care, and I'm very grateful because this is something very near and dear to my heart. So, a complex adaptive systems approach uses a bottom-up approach. For example, here in this video, you can see a bunch of starlings that are flocking in Michigan. How can we understand the fact that tons of little organisms all behave kind of independently to create these giant murmurations, to create these organism-like structures? When we try to study them from the outside, we might get the whole blob moving in one direction or the other. But it turns out this is a very complex problem that has been approached by complexity science. Specifically in agent-based modeling, this has been one of the more successful, very early implementations, where you model the birds. You give each bird a couple of rules. It wants to go straight ahead. It wants to maintain a distance from its neighbors on either side. It wants to have an average vector of where its first of its neighbors are going in front, and it doesn't want any birds you know, pecking it from behind. And when we have this and we get outside perturbations, we actually see this swarming structure. So here is one of those ways in which we are using the behaviors of the individual to try and understand how that can lead to a larger overarching structure. So this way, it's a bottom-up approach. We care about the individual. We care about certain things about the individual. Of course, we can't model everything that humans ever have done, but there are certain things that we will care about for our specific problem. In that way, these approaches, complex adaptive systems approaches, of which in archaeology we use primarily agent-based modeling and network analysis, though there are many other approaches, we can look at the individual, the group, the society. And so we can look at the overarching society and telescope down to look at the individual. And that, I think, is why complex adaptive systems research is so interesting. The archaeological record, we know, is the aggregate of many individual decisions. We know that society gives people rules of what they're going to do, but that people are weird. People do not do things optimally, and so people are going to make their individual decisions. And that's where archaeology is so interesting, because we want to know how people interacted in the past. I'm sure every one of us has fantasized about having a time machine to go back. For me, I want to go back to Chaco Canyon in the southwest of the United States. How did this gigantic structure become built by people who were relatively egalitarian and were trying to work on increasing their harvests and being good to each other? And we have this gigantic building appearing. To entangle, entangle the archaeological record, I think that we must use these complex adaptive systems approaches. We need to understand how these individuals do things. And I would say for ESA especially, and this way post-processualists are right, we have to look at the individual experience because that's what gives us that stochasticity. Those things that you are talking about there, how can we understand if you will go to prison but a banker won't, or a politician? So we need to know those, but we also need to understand how individual decisions can lead to structures. And this way, this really reflects that processual viewpoint of structures being important, of variables being important. And so complex adaptive systems kind of acts as a way to move between those. This way, we can have a rigorous methodological approach to looking at these multiple scales of analysis. We can look at the individual, the family, the group, um, and we can see how these individual decisions created the archaeological record. I loved what Juan Barcello said, that we know the effect and we want to know the cause. We have a giant pile of archaeology. We have a midden. We want to know how these people interacted together to make it. Complex adaptive systems is not the only way to do this, but it is a very good way to do it. If you know the things that you really want to study and you can reduce those to a few variables and test them that way. Okay, 
I'll be done talking. Let's talk. Let's all talk. Guys, you're great. You're all on five minutes. Bye. Bye. I just want to start with a quick experiment. Hands up who has ever heard of complexity science. Woohoo! Wow. Oh my god. I, I, like, you will have to do it again and I'll take a photo and send it to my supervisor because he will literally cry. <laughs> this is brilliant. Okay, so what do you think about it? Yeah? I, uh, I, I completely agree with your presentation, but uh, I think that uh, this uh, uh, the beginning, your example in the beginning about the flocking behavior of birds is quite inappropriate because uh, the rules they are given to, to these, uh, which are simulated these flocks of birds, uh, they tend to, to local um, to uh, local mean values, which uh, conversion to global mean value, and such behavior is uh, a bit uh, not quite explainable for human societies, which are much more complex and much more. Um, it's more difficult to, to, to model and to simulate. So I don't uh, say that it is better to, uh, to identify certain social, uh, social variables and then um, uh, in a, for a certain con context, then identify a specific uh, archaeological context and try to relate these two through some kind of modeling, even using statistics, although this is relative, but, uh, but sometimes uh, because we don't, don't know exactly how what uh, are the causal mechanisms uh, act, so it will be it will be uh, difficult to, to to assess exactly what is, or try several times to to, to test uh, some variables and then, then, then see how it goes. <laughs> so I don't think you're saying that this the the birds is inappropriate. I think you're saying that it's too simple. And one of the things with these presentations is trying to reduce variables down. And I work on very simple models and very complex models. People aren't birds. You're very right. <laughs> this is a very, very simple model. But it shows something pretty elegant. We didn't know why they flocked. Create a uh, simple model. We actually model. thought that there was a leader. Yeah. Before the model, people thought that there's a leader bird. And the leader bird tells other birds how to you know where to go. We thought they were telepathic. Yeah, um, pretty and, much. And this, this kind of disproved that. I'm using this very simple model of birds, which we are not, um, to try and, and give you an illustration of how something very simple. And come on, that video is very pretty. <laughs> so giving, uh, just a second Colin, so giving a human example in this kind of context requires a lot more explanation. So this was just that you can use simulation. I agree with you, humans are really complicated. And that's why archeologists and anthropologists need to be the ones doing the simulation. That's why we all, that's why I was so glad so many of you were in the agent-based modeling workshop. Because when you have people who are not intimately familiar with humanity creating these models, they make assumptions that make no sense. And so that's why we are so important for understanding humanity. What did you want to add? Well, I just wanted to say that we like to think that humans are very individualistic and very unique. But when everybody walked into this room, we all sat down in a chair. Nobody sat down on a floor. Nobody is, you know, climbing on the wall somewhere to sit. We, we have predictable behavior. Yes, there is variation, but there's often very tight constraints on that variation, right? So if we can come up with reasonable rules, not strict rules, but reasonable sort of guidelines with tight constraints, on what people will do, then sure, a human society is going to behave <coughs> like a flock of birds. Yes, I would like to ask because uh, I think I am seeing a lot of techniques of analysis, like modeling. But my question is, we are talking, uh, we are really about talking about uh, complexity theory, or we are just talking about techniques? Because if we if we say that we are talking about theories, I am not seeing uh, too much to more much that another theoretical system like Marxist, uh, processual theory, or even cultural history, all of these uh, schools of thought in archaeology has concept, has, has proper theories to understand past. So I think, I think it's very interesting the techniques, the modeling, for example, how, how, can, I, how can we apply modeling to understand past, but I am not seeing a real proper theory about social life in past. Okay, so the complexity theory, the governing theory, 
is that individual decisions matter. And you can't understand an overarching hierarchical decision by just adding up our individual strategies. There's some kind of non-linearity when you interact. Like you can predict how I'm going to walk around the room, but you can't necessarily predict what will happen when I bump into poor Isa. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> right? So there are certain things, and then if we got us all walking around together, we may not be able to predict exactly how those are going to cascade. So we care about the individuals, we care about the interactions of the individuals, and we care about the cascading effects of the system. Okay? Those are the primary bits of complexity theory. Do you want to add anything? Um, so a good example... Because, for example, Gordon Child, 60, 60 years ago, he cared about individuals, he cared about... He, he was one of the key aspects of processualist theory. So I think I, am, I agree with you, but I think that is not enough to talk about complexity, complexity theory. Yeah. So complexity theory, you know, it's not... It's kind of an independent bit of philosophy of science. And many people said, yes, individuals are important, interactions between individuals are important. Nobody has ever made it workable. You know, you can, you can talk as long as you want about it. You can, you know, create essays that go for thousands of pages. But this is the first time that somebody, and it's not because they were wrong or they had bad attitude, it's just because they didn't have the tools, they didn't have the computers. So once we got the computers, we could actually put what people have been talking for a very long time about, but they just couldn't deal with it because there was no computing power to do it. And the same when you look at maths, the kind of linear systems, how you solve it and stuff, that's been done pretty much forever. And they all knew there are non-linear systems. They knew that they're mostly, most of maths is non-linear, but there was just no tools to deal with that because if you were to do it on paper, it would take years. Whereas now we just bang it in the computer and we deal with that. And, and so an example of a complex system and what complexity science does is if you could ask questions to every you know, stockbroker in the world, it still doesn't allow you to predict where the financial crisis will happen and when the, the whole stock exchange will crash. And this is what complexity science tries to deal with where you know, no matter how much you research each individual, it will not help you to predict the whole full system. And you can only do it using the, the computing power of, of, you know, very, very potent computers. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why it was only, people talked about it, it always existed, there's nothing new about it, but there was no way of actually putting it in, in place and putting it in practice. And we have to stop on it because then we'll now put it back into archaeology.